I've, uh, I've truly enjoyed tonight and uh, thank you so much for all of you for, for being here and for sharing your stories for our alumni and for our prospective students for coming out and, uh, um, and checking us out and seeing what we're about. And uh, we are now just about to rock your world. This is going to be the most exciting part of the evening. So you're going to be so glad you came out tonight. Um, Gil Wilkes is uh, one of the awesomest, that's not a word really, but one of the greatest people I know. We were bus buddies for a while. And um, he is with the uh, School of Communication and Culture, which I graduated from. And I cannot even begin to explain how valuable just communication, culture is in today's society. And Gil is going to bring it to a whole new level, a very practical approach, a very hands-on approach that we can all make use of. So without further ado, Gil, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, so can I get another hug? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's it. So thank you for raising expectations beyond my competence. <laughs> okay, so, so what I'm going to be talking about is social media. Uh, social media, social media, the, the, the people's media, only it really isn't. So, so uh, accompanying me on the keyboards... Uh, is Chelsea Smith. Uh, Chelsea Smith, uh, Chelsea is a, uh, uh, one of the current BAPC students who I uh, asked in to help me because uh, uh, I'm very bad with computers and stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's just not my, f not, not my thing. Uh, technical stuff, no. Uh, but anyway, so, 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 and what I'm going to be talking about is social media. Now, does everybody, does everybody, when I say social media, does everybody know pretty much what I'm talking about? If I were to ask you, yeah, you probably... <laughs> Probably don't. No, when I ask my students, right, and there's 20 somethings who have been telnetting from their mother's wombs and so forth, I'll say, What is social media? And they'll come up with every wrong definition you can think of. Uh, so, so, social media, when we talk about social media, what we're talking about is. Now, go back in time with me to the turn of the last century, the year 2000, right? I was flying out to a, 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 a conference in Portland, a conference in Portland with my uh, academic advisor. Um, uh, uh, we were going to, actually, we were, we were giving a presentation at Intel that was, was funding research we were doing. And the research was on kinetic typography. That's typography that moves. And why were we doing kinetic typography? Because we all knew at the time, this is 2000, that a lot of our computing was going to migrate to tiny screens, right? Phones and so forth. You know, people had phones. The smartphones weren't out yet, but they were, they were coming. We knew they were coming. And we knew that people were going to be using internet devices in lieu of uh, their desktops and so forth. So we wanted to create text that was optimized for tiny screens. Now, what we didn't know at the time was nobody cares, right? So, so everything moved to tiny screens, and nobody is just as readable as it is on a big screen. But we didn't know that. We were working hard on that. We went to report on that brilliant research that nobody ever used. And, uh, uh, so, so, but when we got to Portland, when we got to Intel to report on our brilliant findings with respect to usability tests with kinetic typography, nobody wanted to talk about kinetic typography. They were all talking about that technology leader AOL. Okay, so, so AOL had come out with the most trivial application, right? Just, you know, chat technology had been around for, it's been around for a long time. Chat's been around for a very long time. Uh, what they did, though, though, is they took chat and they added another technically trivial innovation, the buddy list. Okay, so, so for the first time ever, okay, you can actually select. If you go on the IRC, the Internet Chat Relay, right? So it's like, it's like the Wild West. Uh, if you join a channel and whatever, there's everybody there. You can't control any discourse or whatever. With AOL Instant Messenger, suddenly you could select friends. And uh, uh, this tiny innovation, this very small innovation, changed the demographics of the Internet. Uh, uh, all through the 90s, if you look at the research literature, one of the big problems was for researchers how few females there were online. And this created all sorts of interesting sociological effects, like so-called electronic cross-dressing. Uh, uh, this was a, uh, uh, I'm not joking, a, pa a researcher named Pavel Curtis, uh, uh, so Xerox Park came, uh, uh, coined this phrase. And what it, was, it, what it meant was, you know, so there's so many men online. This was back in the 90s, right? Uh, there were so many men online and, and social misfits like myself, uh, that if you were a female, yeah, that was a problem. You got a lot of attention. So females tended to present gender neutral. They would present as, you know, initials or whatever to, to avoid the uh, unwanted attention. And then you had guys that wanted the attention who would present as females. Electronic cross-dressing. <laughs> now, those sorts of sociological effects have thankfully passed away. Uh, uh, what changed the demographics of the Internet was simply that buddy list. Suddenly, there were more females online in two, the year 2000 than there were males. It changed the demographics of the Internet, AOL Instant Messenger. 
Now, now, can you, can you guess what age group this sudden rush of females were? 12-year-old girls. 12-year-old oh. <laughs> girls. So you had these, it was so funny because uh, Suguru and I, who were, who were at Intel at the time, I mean, so, so we were subjected to one presentation after another of these ponytailed, you know, geeky uh, 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 software developers who were spending all their time studying 12-year-old females. Very disturbing. But anyway, so, so what they discovered was uh, uh, that these women were using uh, uh, this networking, uh, they, they were developing networks, I should say, that were different than any networks we had seen before, right, in online communications. In the 90s, uh, uh, people talked about sparse networks. You had your internet friends, and then you had your face-to-face -face friends. And if you ever met an internet friend, it was always disappointing. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, this is terrible. Uh, so, 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 what they discovered with these 12-year-old females, however, was if you looked at their buddy lists, these were all people they knew face-to-face. -face. They were developing dense networks that actually modeled their face-to-face -face networks. Well, what does that sound like? Facebook. Right? It's exactly that. That's social media. If you can make choices about who to listen to and who not, yeah, that's social media. That's the social part of social media. The buddy list, uh, AOL's buddy list, becomes friends and followers on Twitter, becomes friends on Facebook, and so forth and so on. That's what makes social media social media. So that's the, the sort of so social, you know, in a sense, all media is social. You turn on the television, that's kind of social. Not. But, uh, but, but, uh, so, so, but in the technical sense, that's what we made by social media. If it's got a buddy list, if it's allowing you to select who you're following or who follows you, social media. Now, what I'm going to be talking about is either, uh, for those of you who are into marketing, so forth, branding operations, how do you brand yourself in the social media environment, or if you're not into that at all, how to impress your friends with social media, how to develop a network. Uh, uh, so, 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 so uh, uh, um, Chelsea, uh, if you could click that first plus sign. Yeah, so, uh, met the metaphor, gift economies, a network like a gift. Yeah, click, click gift economies, would you? Uh, so, yeah, there we go. So, so if you enter gift economy into Google, at, at Google Images, right? So this is what you get, lots of gifts and so forth. What is a gift economy precisely? Gift economy is the metaphor I want to use for how to operate in a network. Uh, can you go back to my presentation, please? Um, uh, so, so, so it's, yeah, the, perfect, well done. Um, uh, so, so, so a network is like a gift economy. What do I mean by that? Okay, so think of any sort of network. I uh, have networks, uh, markets, hierarchies. These are all kinds of networks. A hierarchy, for example, is a network that looks like what? Okay, so you're going to have a steep sort of pyramid, right, with somebody on top and then uh, uh, layers that are uh, uh, progressively larger and so forth. Uh, uh, that would be a hierarchy. A market is generally more like a formal network. Uh, you'll have clusters, dense clusters here and there and so forth. Uh, uh, so, 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 so social networks, yeah, they also have this dense clustering effect, but they follow a very different sort of pattern. Uh, social networks generally follow a power law distribution, and I know that I just excited the gag reflex of Rebecca and uh, Andrea, yes, uh, so, so, because all they heard from me uh, during the, t their, the, the 10 weeks they took my class, and this is a... <laughs> was power law distribution, power law distribution, power law distribution. What does that mean precisely? That means it's not a normal distribution. A normal distribution gives you a bell curve. Uh, 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 in social networks and online and so forth, you get power law distributions where you have a few people on top and then everybody else. You're either Google, which gets everybody, or you're nobody. You're either AOL Instant Messenger, oh, not AOL. <laughs> okay, so, so you're either Yahoo or you're uh, uh, eBay or you're nobody. You're either at the top or you're nowhere. There is no such thing as an average website. Uh, an aver average is a concept that requires a bell curve. Power law distribution, no. Uh, uh, so, so, so now think back to the, any image of a network, right? What is a network? Nodes and lines, OK? Most people concentrate on the nodes. You're a node in a network. What's important are the lines. The question you always need to ask is, what's passing along those lines? Why do we organize in networks at all? Because we want something. It's value. What passes along those lines is value. Think of a, a network like a family. What, are you, what, are you, what, what is passing along the lines in a family? Well, mutual support, mutual aid. That's what families do. In an organization, what is it about? It's about generating value. There are things, there are resources crossing those lines. That's why people organize themselves into networks, because they're very efficient at doing what? Distributing value, however construed within that social organization in various ways.
And this is where we get to the awesome law of reciprocity. Uh, and again, this will probably excite Rebecca and Andrea's gag reflex. I'm always talking about the awesome law of reciprocity. So, so, so what I am is a rhetorician. Rhetoricians study what precisely. Um, uh, so, 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 so if you don't know what rhetoric is or you don't know what a rhetorician does, that's okay. Neither does my father. Uh, and he constantly asks, what do you do, son, exactly? Anyway, so so, so uh, what we study is persuasion, how to get people to do stuff with words. Okay, so we're very interested in things like social motivation. Why do people do the stuff they do? Why do people ha behave the way they behave? Uh, uh, one of the reasons why people do the things they do uh, uh, is reciprocity. Reciprocity means what precisely? If somebody invites you over for dinner, what's well, the first thing that comes to your mind? Or well, the first thing that comes to my mind is, God, now I have to invite them over. Crap. Okay, so, so, so I am very visibly, I go out of my way to make sure you know I'm Jewish, right? See, the kippah and all that. So, so, I still get Christmas cards. Okay, so, so if I get a Christmas card, do I ignore it? No, I can't ignore it. What I do is go out and get the biggest, Jewishest card I can and write, you insensitive bastard, and send it back. Why? It's the law of reciprocity. If you get a card in the mail, you're going to send something back. So panhandlers use this. It's in the neighborhood where I live. One of their favorite tricks that gets me every time because I walk with my head down like an idiot. Um, uh, so, so is that you get this flower extended to you, right? And like, so, so you reach out and grab it by instinct. Uh, uh, so the moment you have it in your hand, they release. And what happens? They ask for a donation. And you try to get the flower back. And they're like, no, no, no. Reciprocity. You feel really grim if you don't give them a donation for the flower they just handed you that you accepted. Uh, I accepted, like an idiot. The awesome law of reciprocity. If you want to grow, if you want to develop a network, oh, and this is, a, so, so please click awesome law of reciprocity. Uh, 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 my, yes, master of the obvious. Uh, uh, this, is, <laughs> this is one of those secret laws that nobody knows. If you want to grow or develop a net, uh, network, you have to give away a lot of stuff. Now, giving away a lot of stuff doesn't mean free gifts, uh, uh, not at all. If you f so follow most social networks online, they're not giving away gifts. Uh, they're giving away stuff like this, like this image of master of the obvious. I love this. Can you go back to my presentation, Chelsea? Very good. So the question then becomes, I love this uh, uh, big screen here. Um, uh, this is called, uh, they told me this is called a, a confidence screen. Uh, it really does give me confidence. Uh, so so I'm, <coughs> I can just look here and, uh, and pretend like I'm still engaged with you. <laughs> okay, so, so, so where was I? Oh, yes. So what, gives, uh, what gifts do I give on my Twitter feed? I would prefer a teleprompter. They're actually uh, clear, right? So, so, but I couldn't get one of those. <laughs> I'm always asking for too much. Anyway, so, so of my students especially. Uh, uh, so, so, so what gifts do I give on my Twitter feed? Okay, so, so, so let me tell you first about the awesome power of non-engagement. Can you click the awesome power of non-engagement? Yes, carometer, low, high. Okay, so, so there are a lot of people who, who uh, a lot of so-called gurus online, who will, you can go back, uh, uh, the carometer, um, uh, 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 that will have meaning in a moment. There are a lot of people who talk about online communications will tell you, you know what, social media is all about engagement. And then they'll look profound, right? They'll rub stroke their chin. It's all about engagement. What you want to do online, what social media is all about, it's engagement, right? It's allowing people and institutions to be exposed to each other in new ways. It's allowing, you know, like, like a government agency now can, you know, have their own Twitter feed and connect with people as they never could before. Yeah, it's such bullshit, too. Uh, so, so thanks for being my straight person, Andrea. Andrea was a great straight person back then. Yeah. Uh, so, so <laughs> meet the new Andrea. Uh, so, so anyway. Uh, engagement. Now, uh, the in-house researcher at HubSpot actually tested this hypothesis. Imagine that, actually testing on a hypothesis. Uh, most of what passes for knowledge in social media is never tested. It's just uh, taken a, uh, anyway, so, so this guy actually tested the hypothesis. He looked at the most high, at the highest performing Twitter feeds, the highest performing Facebook pages, highest performing in what terms? Okay, so what are the, what are the metrics for a Twitter feed? Well, number of followers, number of retweets, that sort of thing. Actually, one of the nice things about social media is it's easy to rate your performance by simply looking at your own Twitter feed and figuring out, well, how many people are retweeting what I'm, what I'm sharing? How many people are paying attention? How many followers am I accumulating? What he discovered was that the level of engagement is actually inverse, <laughs> inversely proportional to people's performance. If you're spending a whole lot of time on your Twitter feed talking to other people, 
Uh, n- nobody wants to be there with you. Uh, uh, so, so, and I treat my Twitter feed the same way. The noisy people who aren't sharing stuff, yeah, I tune them right out. I don't want to know about your breakfast burrito. Did you see that? Yeah, the breakfast burrito. I, uh, can you click? Oh, you already clicked that. Anyway, so, so, so this is the, uh, the breakfast burrito is the cliche for, yes, the, the, the breakfast burrito just uh, absolutely don't care. Uh, these are the people who on their Twitter feed or on their Facebook page have their camera phone. They're having their breakfast at the airport. Oh, here's what I'm having. Yeah, I prefer not to see that. Okay, now there are times when, you know, that, that's, that's what you want to see if it's your mom. But if it's me, do you care what I'm having for breakfast? Yeah, th- thank you, Andrea. Yes, it, absolutely not. <laughs> so, so Rebecca and Salen, feel free to jump in. Uh, so she's, she's carrying the whole burden of my audience, uh, uh, audience participation. Okay, so can you go back to my... Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so, so the awesome power of non-engagement. Again, the highest performing Twitter feeds are the ones that they're not engaging with you. If, you. if you're on Twitter, you probably know Guy Kawasaki. Everybody follows this guy. Uh, so, so what, does he ever engage with you? Absolutely not. You can write him all you want. He's probably going to ignore you. Even though he's got a whole staff writing his Twitter feed. He shares lots of really great stuff connected to a, an aggregator called Alltop, and we'll be looking at that in a moment. He shares a lot of really great stuff. He's a great person to follow. You will learn stuff you didn't know. He's really great at finding things that you didn't know existed. That's what makes him one of the top performers. He's sharing stuff that nobody else can find or nobody else has found. And that brings us to syndicate, oh, the awesome power of the network economy. Yeah, okay, so network economy, what does that mean precisely? Uh, uh, when we talk about networks, networks do what? They share value. A network economy has different properties than, say, a manufacturing economy or a service economy. A network economy works like this. Say you're the only person in the world with a fax machine. What do you have? <laughs> you could sit there all day and never get a fax. <clears throat> You're not going to get a fax. Why? Because nobody else has a fax machine. Your fax machine actually rises in value the more people own fax machines. The value of your equipment uh, uh, above your costs actually goes up the more people are using fax machines. The value of your Twitter feed goes up the more people are actively using the network, the more people start following and so forth. That's a network economy. Network economies have, uh, are economies of scale, but they're differently organized. The scale is differently. Scale has different properties. The denser the network, the higher performing the network. So the problem becomes for us, for communicators, and so forth, how do we develop a network? How do we develop a network that shares value? Because first we have to have values. But anyway, so, 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 so the, the, the principle the principle of online communications in general, but especially social media, is syndication and aggregation. Okay, the core principle of a network economy. Syndication and aggregation means what precisely? Okay, syndication means, uh, think about any syndicated columnist. A syndicated columnist does what? Uh, they produce content that appears in a lot of newspapers. They write it once, gets published everywhere. When you publish, when you post something to your Facebook page and your status update, that's what you're doing. You're syndicating that content. When you post it to your Twitter feed, you're syndicating that content. Your own Twitter stream is, an, is a field of aggregation. All the people that you're following, that's aggregating their posts. Syndication, aggregation. Syndication, though, goes beyond your, your Twitter stream or your status updates and your Facebook page, right? There are thousands of blogs out there, just trillions of them. Lot, uh, trillions, not trillions, that's an exaggeration. There are a bunch, whole bunches of them, right? Lots of information getting produced all the time. Now, in communications, we make a distinction between push media and pull media. Pull media, you go into a library or a bookstore. What do you see? A whole bunch of books, okay, of different colors. They're actually quite colorful, right? Squint your eyes. Don't look at the titles. Well, you'll see lots of different colors, different sizes, quite attractive. They have heft and weight and so forth. They're trying to draw you in. That's pull. They'll put them in different places, right? So, so, so uh, fiction for young adults, uh, art, um, uh, uh, so, so cooking. What sort of books do you like, Chelsea? Oh, rhetoric. Oh, re- rhetoric, yes. There are no rhetoric sections. <laughs> you won't find rhetoric. That's, that's for ultra geeks like myself who have to shop online because bookstores won't carry our books. Damn it. Anyway, so, 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 but you go to, uh, uh, so, 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 but you go to the sections that you want, and the, that's media that draws you in. Pull, push media, however, is media that knows your name. 
if I address an email message to you, that's push media. It's going to show up in your inbox. Or if I write you a letter, it's going to show up in your mailbox. Your name's on it. Push media can find you. Now, what people do in online environments to manage lots of information is they change the pull media of the web. And think of the web as just one big landfill full of media that's trying to pull you in through various ways, right? Through, through other people's connections, recommendations, through search engines, and so forth, through whatever means. And these means are all faulty and horrible, and they don't work very well. Uh, so all the usability studies on uh, 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 search engines and so forth will tell you that most people find stuff by accident. What an aggregator does, like Google Reader, and I'll show you, is it takes the pull media of the web and turns it into push media. Okay, you find a blog that you like, you subscribe to it through a syndication service called, do you know what it is? You know what it is. No, you, you took ten, RSS. Do you remember RSS? <laughs> I'm going to cry. I, I must have repeated RSS like 10 zillion times. Okay, RSS simply means real simple syndication. It's in XML. Does everybody know what XML is? Uh, don't even worry about it. Uh, so, 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 so RSS is simply a service to do what? So you can subscribe to blogs. And if you have a blog, or you like blogs, yeah, it's already there. If you have a blog, you're throwing an RSS feed, it's there. I can take your feed, put it in my aggregator, and my aggregator will update when you update. It'll tell me when you've posted something. So I don't have to go all over the web to my favorite blogs. You know how some people have, like, some people actually cry when you, like, update their computer and they lose their bookmarks? You'll have absolute tears, right? Because, you know, they accumulate all these bookmarks. They need, you know, they don't save them to a file and so forth. Something happens to their computer, it's gone, and oh my god, I lost it. What an aggregator does is it, is it saves live feeds as opposed to bookmarks. So you don't have to go from one blog to another and visit and so forth. No, 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 not at all. It will actually tell you when these things have updated. And I will show you how to use a browser extension so that it will actually tell you what posts are ranked above other posts in terms of readership and so forth. So you can make even more intelligent selections and find those interesting things that other people want so you can develop your own network. Oh my god, that's wonderful. <coughs> anyway. So, 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 <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, you may. Uh, uh, so, 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 so um, email me, uh, write me, because <laughs> I'm so good with email. Okay, so, so would you click alltop.com, please? Uh, so, yeah, that's the first one there. So, so all top, this is what I told you about Guy Kawasaki, right? Guy Kawasaki was this angel investor genius who starts this site for like it's this multi-million dollar site. Uh, he started it for three grand. Three grand it cost him. Uh, uh, so, so, so what this is? Uh, there's nothing here. It's an empty shell. Okay, what it is are a whole bunch of RSS feeds from other blogs. What he does is he has, added, he has a community of people that do what? Okay, that recommend feeds, and he goes and checks them out. You know, if it's a high-performing feed, he puts it here. Okay, so, so, so you're scrolling, so, so, so can you... <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? It's fascinating. It's, that's why she starts scrolling. Yeah, you do realize I'm actually presenting while you're saying, okay. <laughs> I'm teasing. So can you go to, uh, uh, let me think, where do I want to go? Hot topics, new topics, recent topics, mild. No, uh, just, yeah, click C, C, A, B, C. Uh, so, so there, 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 there let, uh, yeah, there we go. Perfect. Click C. Yeah, oh, well, uh, new topics. We went to new topics instead. Digital vi data visualization, peak oil, those are new topics. Yeah, click C. Click, click, click. Click that thing. Click it. Ah, here we go. Perfect. Okay, so, 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 and you'll notice that communication's not in there. That makes me mad, but whatever. Anyway, so, 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 these are a number of topics, right? Like Chicago Now, Chile, Christianity, Christianity, I, I visit that one every day. Um, uh, so, so, cigars, classical music, climbing, coffee, college basketball. Uh, click, uh, click, click one that you like, Chelsea. Um, let's have a look at it. Look. What did you click? Citizen Journal? Oh, good one. <laughs> yes, well done. Okay, so, so, so Citi Global Voices, News Trust, Most Recent Stories, and so forth. What is this precisely? These are feeds. They update every day. These are the top blogs in the area of citizen journalism. And if you're interested in communications at all, yeah, this is a, this is a place you should visit all the time. Why? Because these are the top voices in what we would like to call citizen journalism. These are people that are non-professionals who are actually producing news content. This is one kind of aggregator. 
probably the least useful kind. Uh, uh, so, so can you go back to my presentation, please, Chelsea? Thank you very much. That was really great. Okay, so, so click technorati.com. Technorati.com. If you have a blog and you have not registered at technorati.com, that's a problem. Why? Because technorati.com knows about your blog. It's already there. Uh, you need to go register and claim your blog. And if you have, uh, so, so I just hope that nobody else is, what's happening there? Is that, oh, that's not porn. Good. Okay, so, so, so if, um, uh, Technorati is what? It is an aggregator. It's one of the earliest aggregators. The big problem with blogs, the big blog revolution, remember when blogs were actually the hot new thing, like back in 2004, back before the surface of the earth cooled and dinosaurs still ruled the earth? Anyway, so, so, so way back when blogs were still big, huge stuff, uh, big, huge things, the big problem was there are too many of them. How do we follow them and so forth? What Technorati does is it sucks. No, it doesn't suck. It su uh, so, so tags, right? If you use a blog, if you use WordPress, TypePad, I don't care what blogging service you use, one of the options you're given is tagging. You can tag your blog posts. What Technorati does is it uses those tags to enable you to search blogs. It's also an aggregator. All this stuff comes together. So you can actually produce searches in Technorati that will throw an RSS feed so you can follow trends in whatever area you want. So, so say you're interested in citizen journalism. This is another resource. Say you're interested in anything, animal medicine. This is a great way to keep yourself briefed in that particular domain of study, in that particular enterprise. So, so can you go back to my presentation? Chelsea, Chelsea. Okay, so, so uh, technology, I also have dig.com, cnet, reddit.com. These are what we call social news sites. This is where people go, they'll post stuff, right? You find an article you really like, you post it to dig. And here's what happens. Here's what, so you've posted to dig, and people voted up or down. So if you go to dig.com, if you go to CNET, if you go to Reddit, what you're going to discover is what people are most interested in at this precise moment in a particular topic. So if you're an activist, if you're a communicator, or if you're a professional, the nice people at VicPD, VicPD, I love that, uh, VicPD. It used to be the Victoria Police, well, that's too, yeah, now they rebrand it as VicPD. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, so, so they, they, yeah, that, that's really great. I follow that too, so that I can I can keep ahead of the police when I'm doing things. That, you know, anyway, so so yeah, follow their Twitter feed if you're stalking people, um, uh, so, 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 because they will tell you where they are. Anyway, so so but 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 what Vic PD does, right? They actually have an aggregator page where they're following news about tasers. Now, why is that interesting to Vic PD? Well, it's because the chief of police, Jamie Graham, was the guy that brought tasers to Canada. How do you like to have that on your resume? I brought tasers to Canada. So now every time somebody gets tased to death, okay, they come here. Journalists will descend here to ask, you know, why did you do that? Why did you bring tasers? What were you, what were you thinking? Okay, so, so their PR people like to know. If somebody gets tased and there's a mishap, yeah, you know, people are going to show up here. So they're following. They're using these services to do what? To follow this stuff. So, so StumbleUpon is one of my favorites. StumbleUpon is a, is a really tight-knit group community. Well, it's called StumbleUpon because why? Because people are rating websites as they follow them. You'll find stuff there you won't find anywhere. It outperforms any search engine. Oh, and TechMeme. Would you click TechMeme, please? Perfect, TechMeme. This is TechMeme. Now, TechMeme is an interesting case. I hope I didn't hurt anything. Okay, so, so um, I'm in my socks. Okay, no big deal. Okay, so, so, so tech meme. Um, notice how the page is organized. Okay, so you have a headline. This is a headline from a magazine. Okay, mainline source. And then you have what? Links to blogs. Okay, what this is telling you is what high-performing blogs are linking to this story. Now, the reason why this is up here and this is down here is this outranks this in user interest. This gives you a visual understanding, this is why it's called tech meme, of the ideas that are circulating in the community of people that are interested in technology. Right now, uh, Zynga's, <laughs> Zynga's stock scandal, I have no idea why that would be important, is the top story. A few weeks ago, and actually I'm doing a study on this, a few weeks ago the top story was all about what? It was Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg announced major changes to Facebook, right? And so, so uh, TechMeme was dominated by stories about that. And what I did was strip all that text out as the basis for a study. Why did I strip that text out? Because I know that's the text that most people are reading. Why? Because that's the way this aggregator works. 
Now I know what qu I know the questions you're asking yourself. Can you go back to my presentation, please? Chelsea. Chelsea. I know the question you're asking yourself. You're asking yourself, gee, Gil, this is really great. All these other aggregators and so forth. But say I'm interested in something really esoteric, and I want my own aggregator to cover. Uh, how do I do that, Gil? How do I do that? Well, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so, 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 so that probably wasn't the question rolling around your mind, but that's for my, that's for my studies going here. Or the, the, so anyway, hey, what if my interests aren't represented in an aggregator? Can you click that plus sign, please? Actually, why don't you, can you uh, uh, reduce the other? Yeah, just click the minus signs. Uh, uh, so, so, so get rid of that clutter, visual clutter. Ah, there we are. Click that one and that top. Ah, there we are. So, so and uh, uh, click Google Reader. Google Reader. Uh, password. Actually, I have Google Reader open in the, the far left-hand tab. Perfect. There we are. Okay. So, 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 so you'll notice that there is a folder called Buzz. Okay. Uh, now, that's not a very descriptive folder title. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so the folder, uh, and can you click the folder called Buzz, please? Just click. Yeah, there we are. Okay, so, so, so here's what's happening. Here's what you're seeing. I have taken a number of feeds and organized them into a folder called Buzz. Uh, the reason I call them Buzz, alchemical emblems, altitude branding, this is really a random collection, very random. Uh, the reason I called it Buzz is because these are the, this is the stuff I like. Now look here. This is uh, a post rank 1.6. Do you know how Google works? Google works according to a, an algorithm called PageRank. Okay. In other words, when you uh, commit yourself to a Google search, what happens is a number of titles show up, right, in a queue. Well, how do you, uh, why does one show up before another? Well, what Google does is it registers user activity in various forms. One of them is simply links in. Okay, so that's page rank. What this is, is post rank. And what this is telling you is what posts in a blog outperform other posts based on various, uh, based on various act user activities, whether they're linking in, whether they're visiting it, whether they're friend, uh, favoriting it in various services. So I, can, I know that this article, for example, from Hacker News, Hacker News, Hacker News is one of my go-to sites, 1% of nothing launches to get startups donating equity. What the hell? Vertical versus grid product listings. Show HN, 48-hour products and so forth. Um, can you click, please? Uh, so, so there's a reddit.com, correction to the misleading infographic. Yeah, click that, please. There we go. And scroll down. Okay, so, so you see several options here. Share. Email. Keep unread. Would you click send to, please? Delicious, stumble upon. I've configured this, so these are, these are the services I like to share stuff on. Okay, so, so let me explain to you what's happening here. Here's how I'm developing my network. Okay, so, 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 so I have several interests that I pursue. If you, if you were to scroll down, don't scroll down. But if you were to scroll down, you'll find another file folder called End of the World. Okay, so no, I'm not into apocalyptic spec speculation, but I am into economics. Okay, I'm not an econo economist. I, 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 I like to read economics. It's like witchcraft to me. It's like reading the occult. Oh, this is fascinating. I don't understand any of it. Quite mysterious, but it sure affects my life. Holy cow. Um, uh, so, so since 2008, I've become obsessed with economics. So I have a whole file folder on econ economics blogs that I go to, and, I can, and, and be, I'm not an economist. I have no idea how to tell what information is better than any other. I let the community do that for me. I use PostRank to tell me what are the top posts among those people that are interested in economics. Now, I, then, I, then, then I port that stuff, the, one, the stuff I'm interested in. And I've, I've, I've known because I, I've learned from the community who they listen to. One of my favorite writers is Ambrose Ever, Evans Pritchard uh, uh, of The Telegraph. Great economics writer. And I'll port his stuff right into Twitter. And what happens? I'm suddenly getting followed by lots of economists who think I'm an economist. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it, I, I'm, yeah, I know that sounds funny, it's that, but uh, because I'm obsessed with economics and because I'm sharing all this economic stuff, I've got a lot of people who like economics following me. I also like technology. So you'll find, uh, if you scroll down, can you scroll down? Actually, just, just uh, not there, but um, scroll down other folders. 
Yeah, that's, yeah, there you go. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. You're doing a great job, great job. Skip the porn, there we go, there we go. Skip, skip, skip. Uh, uh, so, ah, you caught that. that was, okay, so, so, so yeah, that, that's my end of the world. Uh, so yeah, the daily reckoning. <laughs> so, so, so a lot of the economics blogs are quite depressing. Uh, uh, can, you, can you scroll down to, there's a folder called, um, oh, stop at pensions. Okay, so, so I was asked to give a talk at this, this, this group called the International Foundation. And these are people that train trustees for pension funds. And they asked me to come in and tell them about, talk to them about social media. And so, so I did this for them before a plenary session of like 700 people, 700 trustees. I mean, these are the most exciting people ever. Accountants and so, oh my God, what a tough room. Uh, uh, none of my stupid jokes worked, Chelsea. It was just brutal. Uh, anyway, so, 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 but, okay, what I did for them was I put together a bunch of feeds. These are like the top ranked posts about what? They're actually a whole bunch of pension blogs. I didn't know anything about pensions going into this talk. But I sure did when I walked out. Click the file folder, please, for pensions. OK, now notice this. OK, so, so, so this is a really interesting discourse, because it's always this way. You always get this pattern of 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That means you know, nobody's reading this, but then you'll get a 10 or a 9. OK, will Merkel's Greek, will Merkel's Greek gambit backfire? Now ask you, why is that interesting to pensioners or people that are trustees of pensions or people that are interested in pensions, they are following that news intensely. What's going on in Greece right now is a breaking of the social contract that's never happened before. Pensioners are actually being told, yeah, this is going away. The promises we made, it's going out the window. Can you scroll down, please? I want to see more of these uh, headlines. Yeah, uh, uh, so pension pulse. Okay, yeah, okay, so Greek bailout, uh, uh, Greek bailout or corporate handouts. And why is Merkel, why is Merkel involved in all this? Okay, so 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 yeah, Merkel's the one that's being called upon to do what? Yeah, to bail them out. Uh, so so it's a fascinating story that I knew nothing about until I started reading this. Had no idea. Okay, so I knew that you know, uh, so 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 I knew the basic problem. Okay, yeah, Greek debt, so forth and so on. Uh, 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 what I learned from this was okay. The true character of the problem for people that are invested in pensions. Oh, and by the way, uh, here another thing I learned right there with my pension trustee friends is most of the capital in the world, you talk about pools of capital, right? Pools of money are held in pension funds. And here's another problem that I didn't know. Okay, so, so, so you know, people like the, the US Federal Reserve have kept interest rates where? At zero. What does that mean if you're a pension fund manager? You can't make money. There's no, there, you can't make interest income. All these retirees that save so much so that they could actually live off interest, they can't do that. There is no financial interest that will give, no financial instrument, I should say, that will give you a return. And these pension funds are suddenly underfunded. Why? Because they can't grow, they can't develop. Interest rates are at zero. Didn't know all that. I do now. And I'm sharing it on Twitter. So I have a lot of angry people uh, that, that following me now. Uh, so, so what does this mean precisely? Okay, this goes back to exactly what I was saying about what? Giving Net, away. I'm sorry? About giving it away. Exactly. Gifting. Thank you. Uh, so, so, so what is your first name? Glenn. Glenn. So Glenn is also a former student of mine. Uh, no, you're not. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so where are you from, Glenn? Victoria, and, so, and you're interested in one of our programs, are you? Uh, did one. Did one? Oh, you're an alum. <laughs> I'm Malt. Malt, uh, uh, leadership. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay, so, so, so uh, uh, quite the leader, uh, I would say. <laughs> uh, so, 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 but you're absolutely, you're on the money. Uh, so, 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 but that's exactly right. Okay, so this is how it works. What you do, okay, here is how, here is how you develop a high-performing feed, a high-performing blog, a high-performing source. Here is how you brand yourself. Say your corporation produces what? Give me an example, Chelsea. What is it? Am I putting it on the spot? I'm sorry. Uh, so, so, so uh, does somebody? Uh, so, so, well, well, yes. Sure. What if you were a company that um, offered coupons for groceries? Coupons. Yeah, I have coupons for groceries. Okay. So, 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 say you were a company that offered coupons for groceries, and you put up a Twitter feed. Now, the problem I hear from people that I consult with about social media is, yeah, if I put up a Twitter feed, okay, so people tell me I have to post every day, what the hell do I post? 
uh, so, so if I have a blog, what, the, what am I supposed to share? I actually have students in communications telling me this. You know, so I, I will ask them, put together a blog. I have nothing to say. You're in a communications program. <laughs> now, I, I'm editorializing now, Chelsea. <laughs> and, and it wasn't you. Uh, so, so, uh, but anyway, uh, but getting back, to, <laughs> getting back on topic. Um, uh, uh, so, 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 but, but, but it is a good question. You have a blog, okay, so, so you, they will tell you if you don't put content there, people are going to stop coming. You need to actually put content. What are you going to do if you have a Twitter feed? If you have a Twitter feed, you should be posting at least five posts a day to remain competitive with anybody. Where do you find all this stuff? Yeah, well, here's how to do that, okay? And say you're a corporation that does what? Provides grocery coupons. Does that mean your every post has to be about grocery coupons? No. You brand yourself as what? Somebody who knows a lot about food. Somebody who knows a lot about the food supply chain. Somebody who knows a lot about agriculture. Somebody who knows a lot about uh, uh, that sort of foodie stuff that I hate. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I don't hate it. I just, I'm just not into it. Yeah, so, so, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, the, the slow move, uh, slow food movement, right? I'm not into slow food. Uh, uh, so, so when I'm hungry, I like to eat. Uh, anyway, so, so, so but, uh, uh, but you brand yourself as what, okay? Somebody who knows all about food and food value. And you follow food prices and so forth. And actually, if you scroll up, uh, uh, so, so you will find one of my folders. Now, so one of the, there's a folder called food. Click that, please. And here's where I'm following that issue. Why am I following that issue? One of the things I noticed when the economy collapsed was people still need to eat. There's actually an interesting crisis going on in agriculture that I learned about by doing what? By following all the economist blogs. Uh, so, so, so there's a big problem with food inflation. And I learned what precisely? You know the, the, the so-called Arab Spring and so forth? You know, they're saying, oh, this is all about you know, an awakening. You do, Democrat, no. All of these nations that are suddenly unstable are grain importing nations. In 2008, uh, the cost of basic commodities went through the roof. Now, you and I in North America don't pay that much, right? So, so a loaf of bread has so much non-food in it that if, you know, if, if grain prices rose a certain percentage, we hardly notice it. Uh, they notice it in Egypt. Food inflation is causing unrest everywhere. And so I started, a, I started a folder to do what? To follow that. Why? Because it predicts social unrest. And it also predicts developments in communication. That's my field. Why? Because when social unrest breaks out in Libya or Egypt or Syria, I get interviews because the people are using Twitter and so forth. Social media. This is how you brand yourself. This is how you impress your friends. Are you into bicycles? Are you into, what are you into, Chelsea? Am I putting you on the spot again? <laughs> Fashion. See, I thought you were going to say automatic weapons. Uh, okay, so, so, so fashion. Uh, that's a good one. So, so I, I should introduce you to Max. Ma remember Max? But yeah, Ma Max is a, a, a guy in our online program who edits two fashion magazines. Yeah, he's the reason I started wearing all black. Yeah, he didn't like my khakis. Uh, so, so he, yeah, oh, he hated my shoes. He's the reason why I now wear leather shoes. I was wearing hiking shoes. Uh, uh, so, so, so he was, yeah, he kept critiquing. Uh, yeah, no, he does not. Uh, uh, anyway, so, 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 so the, uh, Max has a, had a profound influence on the way I dress. Uh, so fashion. Okay, so, so, so I'm not interested in fashion, but if you were interested in fashion, oh my God, there are a thousand sources on fashion out there. What could you do with that if you wanted to brand yourself as a fashion person? Oh my God. Okay, so, so, so what I would do, the way, way I would start is I'd look all up and down the supply chain. If you're interested in fashion, start with textiles, the production of textiles, the fabrics, the import and export issues. And then go to the fashion houses of, of Paris or Milan and so forth and correlate that. And you could instantly become what? Yeah, a total guru in fashion. And if you're running a boutique downtown, that's a great way to brand yourself in your social media and so forth. People will go to your feed to do what? Yeah, to learn about stuff. Now, every once in a while, you'll tell them about a sailor and so forth. Every once in a while, you'll tell them about what's going on at your store. 
But that's how, uh, but by using your aggregator, you can also feed them all sorts of other content that helps educate them in what? Well, when they walk into your store, they'll know the distinction between Peruvian and Egyptian cotton. God, I know more about fashion than I thought. Uh, so, so, yeah, I, I need to stop hanging out with Max. Um, but anyway, so, 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 so you'll know those distinctions. You'll know about lapels. I hate lapels. Uh, I always, uh, my lapels are always wrong, right? They're always too wide or too uh, lapels. Anyway, so, so, so I'm, I'm convinced lapels are just a conspiracy to make people like me look like idiots. Uh, anyway, so, so, so this is how it's done. Search engines, if you're still using Google, please stop. Okay, Google is really great for ordinary tasks. Okay, so like if you need to know the meaning of a word, you're going to Wikipedia, that's, that's fine. If you really need to find stuff to help you in your career or very highly targeted information, use tagging engines like Delicious. Okay, so, so D-E-L-I-C-I-O-U-S or Technorati. They outperform or stumble upon they outperform search engines by orders of magnitude. Why? Google indexes the entire web. And the entire web is constantly under assault by sophisticated search engine optimization operations that are designed to overcome the Google uh, uh, algorithm so that their content goes to the top. The integrity of Google as an information source is kind of compromised. Now, Google is now taking steps to overcome that. But it's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's too little too late. Besides, what you'll get on Delicious are a number of people who are actually interested in your issue or your topic domain who are tagging content. Now, think of it this way. Okay, so, so, so in, in, in human-computer interaction, we call it social filtering. Okay, and I'll, I'll close on this. Okay, so social filtering means what precisely? Social filtering means this. Okay, say you're into wine. And there's a certain wine critic who's consistently giving you predictions you like. Okay, if this guy says, yeah, you know what, this... Oh, I don't know if enough about wine. Um, uh, uh, so this particular Beaujolais... <laughs> I don't drink Beaujolais. Uh, uh, it's really fresh and wonderful. Because I want, if you want the freshest wine... <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry? Oh. I had no idea. <laughs> cool. Funny that you should know that. Uh, uh, so so, so how, how would you know that? What, uh, so you're in the one. Okay. <laughs> okay. So say a particular uh, Beaujolais Nouveau. Thank you so much. That was really fascinating and eerie at the same time. Um, uh, so, 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 uh, say, say a, so, 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 God, where was I? That was so distracting. I forgot where I was. Uh, yeah, so, so we were talking about, yeah, but why was I talking about wine? Social filtering. Ah, thank you, social filtering. Okay, so, so yes, yeah, so, so, so my students know that I lose track, right? This, uh, so so uh, when you, my head is full of stuff, right? So, so any new stuff that comes in pushes old stuff out. And uh, so, so if I learn something new, I'll forget how to tie my shoes, I'll be walking into brawls, that sort of thing. So anyway, um, uh, so, so social filtering means what precisely? You find a wine critic who consistently gives you predictions that, yeah, this, this particular Beaujolais Nouveau is just the best ever. Or you find a movie critic okay, who likes the sorts of films you like. I like horror films. I love horror films. I, I, my, my love for horror films is just unhealthy. Okay, so, so, and, so, but I know not to go to my wife for recommendations about horror films. She likes romantic comedies. If I want a good recommendation for a horror film, I go to people that like horror films or critics that talk about horror films. They're a far better predictor of what I'm going to like. Social filtering means what? You're combining the taste trajectory. And I use trajectory not as a metaphor. This is actually based on vector geometry. What they do is they develop uh, social filtering sites like, say, Delicious. They take the interests of a whole bunch of people and they develop that into a general direction. And so if you're into X, okay, so into wine or whatever, and you like Beaujolais Nouveau as opposed to I don't know, something more sophisticated. Um, uh, uh, so, 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 so you're like me, and you like you know, anything that comes out of a bottle that's sweet, because I have no taste in wine. Um, uh, uh, so so, so uh, you won't be like my wife, who likes the dry stuff. Um, uh, so, so, so your trajectory will be different than mine.
And the power of the, of the predictions you get will be far higher. StumbleUpon, for example, asks you to rate sites. You, follow, you find a site you like, you get a thumbs up, thumbs down. And then it will start feeding you sites. That's why it's called StumbleUpon. It's uncanny how predictive it is. Suddenly, by comparing you, by comparing your likes and dislikes to other likes and dislikes, if you like 10 other things that somebody else likes, that other person is a great predictor of what you're going to like next. Now combine that by millions, not millions, hundreds. <laughs> the predictive power of those services is astonishing. You'll find lots of stuff you wouldn't find otherwise that you can share in your network. And I'm, uh, uh, <coughs> I'm coming to the end. Oh, so, so, so let me give you the example of Ford Motor Company really fast. Click Ford Motor Company, please. Uh, uh, what this is going to take us to is a blog. So if you could scroll down to Ford. These are different. Um, these are the largest people who are on Twitter. Okay, say you have a Twitter feed, and you start sharing stuff, and it's really successful. Here is what you do with the communications channel when it gets successful. Uh, have we gotten to Ford yet? No, ah, here we go. Perfect, perfect. Thank you. Um, notice how Ford has one, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, more than six, because uh, uh, if you're not following Scott Monte, you should. He's an interesting guy. He's the Ford PR guy. Okay, so, so and he's, he does everything I tell you that you should do. He shares lots of really cool stuff, like mashups between Google Maps and old movies that feature Fords, you know, like you know, the Steve McQueen movies. And so, these really great uh, 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 sort of uh, 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 mashups, uh, uh, media mashups, I should say, that are really fantastic that have not, you know, they have very little to do with Ford other than you might see a Ford there. So why do I follow this guy? Yeah, because, yeah, he's, he's sharing really cool stuff. Will I ever buy a Ford? No, I don't know. Ford because their channel was so successful, differentiated. Okay? In other words, they took that one channel, their one feed, and they separated it. Okay? Whole bunch of people, one feed, unmanageable. So you separate functions. Ford customer service, Ford drive one, Ford drive green, Ford trucks, Ford Mustang, Ford racing, Ford racing one. You'll notice there's only one Ford model, Ford Mustang. Whereas trucks has its own category. What does that mean precisely? Well, that means there was enough interest in that one category to give it its own feed. They're differentiating based on what? Audience response. So as you brand yourself for your clothing store or your wine store or whatever, yeah, that's what you do. If you have a channel that works, differentiate it. If you have a channel that doesn't work, drop it. Find another service. Maybe the people you don't like, or maybe the people you don't, maybe the people you need to find don't hang out on Twitter. Maybe they're all on Facebook. Go back to my presentation, please, Chelsea. You've been wonderful, by the way. This is worth so much extra credit. Yeah, you wouldn't that believe. Yeah, so, so, um, uh, so, 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 if you could click Think Gift Economy Share Stuff. I actually forgot what I put there. Oh, the end. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> I'm at the end. Uh, so, so, apparently. Okay. So, 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 and that's basically my message. Okay. So, if you want to develop a social media feed, oh, this is just terribly mysterious. You'll impress me. Share stuff. Okay. Then the problem is, where do you find stuff? Well, go to the aggregation sites. This is where the people that like stuff pile it up. Find what you like and share it. This is how you brand yourself as a leader in a particular topic domain. This is how social media works. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. So big hand round of applause for Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good timing. Good, yeah. yeah, sir. And I'm not a medical doctor. Oh, do you have a question? <laughs> oh, good question. Thank you. I didn't go into that. So, so can you do me a favor? Uh, uh, so, so in the in the URL field, type uh, yeah, just delete that. Type please um, post rank browser extension. Okay, I'm sorry. Separate words. Post rank is one word, and then a space between post rank and browser. Right, yeah, that keyboard's here. difficult. Yeah, there it is. Just yeah, scroll down, click that. Okay, so so. Google, and then click here. It is an extension. 
right? This is, you'll notice that I'm using Google, uh, Google Chrome, right? I actually hate Google Chrome. Google Chrome is evil. <laughs> However, I use it for everything. It's, evil, it's insidious. It's like a brain virus. Anyway, so the reason I like it is because, like it, I don't like it. The reason I use it is because it's so extensible. This is a browser extension. It does what? It extends the performance of the browser. Uh, Google, is, uh, Google Chrome is like its own OS. You can install apps on it the way you install apps on your phone. In fact, it's the same metaphor. You can go to the Google Chrome App Store. Uh, scroll down, please. Uh, uh, click Chrome, please. Yeah, it, right, yeah, perfect. OK, so what it's going to ask you to do is it, you just add, it's already added to Chrome, but you would click here to install it in Chrome. And once you install it, uh, uh, that, the, that rating is going to, so, so thank you for asking that question, because I never explained that, did I? <laughs> Okay, so, so, so uh, no, it, so it was, it did support Firefox, but then Firefox hit level five, and Firefox had some problems, and Mozilla Foundation uh, 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 couldn't get its act together, so Chrome walked past it, and then, uh, and then the nice people, this was, this just kills me, PostRank is a nice Canadian company in, Auto, in Ottawa, uh, a Canadian startup, really fantastic, they got bought by Google. And Google moved them all to America. Uh, uh, so, 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 damn it. Uh, so, 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 uh, uh, so this service still exists, but now it belongs to, f I was about to say effing Google, but I won't. Anyway, so, so it's, it now belongs to Google. So, 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 but that was a great question. Yeah, that, that's, how, uh, uh, that's how you get that extension. Also, RSS. Uh, uh, so, so none of the major browsers support RSS anymore. You'll need an RSS extension. How do you find it? Oh, it's really hard. You Google. RSS extension for whatever browser you want. You'll go right to the App Store, click install, there you go. So, so does that make sense? Perfect. Okay, so, so, so any other really great question? That was a really great question. Yes, uh, oh, so what is your first name? Uh, Bob. Bob, and then what is your first name? Kim. Bob, and then Kim. I just had a question if you uh, could comment on, uh, you were talking about the gift economy. Can you like call? Give some thoughts on the growth of the game ex gaming options that are put on, uh, turning, hmm. Gaming using using user interaction into gaming. Ah, so like gamification. Exactly. Ah, so, so, so yes. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I had a, a discussion on Twitter about this because, like, I posted something on Twitter about. Uh, uh, so, so there's the, these blog authors were saying that gamification is the next social media, right? So, so like, uh, there's a web app, for example, or a, a Chrome app that turns your email client into a game. Uh, so, so, so you know, if you're like me and you hate email. Uh, as Virginia, my colleague, will tell you, I'm bad with email uh, because I just don't like it. I get a whole lot of it, and it takes time and so forth. Anyway, so, so um, uh, uh, but you turn it into a game, right? Where you're actually, it, it's it, it it's giving you clever icons and so forth, and you get points for answering email, and so it's it's, it's really kind of fun. Uh, uh, so so, and I used it a couple times, and uh, it actually did improve my performance in email. But then uh, <clears throat> I kept losing the freaking game, so I got all discouraged and stopped. But anyway, so but that's gamification, right? So say you have, um, say you're at a big tech firm, and you have a whole bunch of people who are doing you know tedious sort of data entry jobs. Uh, uh, so so one way you can make that job more interesting is by gamifying it. Now, some people will say, hey, that's exploiting labor. Because by it, what, part of that gamifying is you get more points for the faster you go, right? Carpal tunnel, here I come. Uh, so, 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 they're, 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 uh, uh, so where was I going with this? So, so gamification is a trend. Um, uh, it's a trend I've been following. Have I been using it or have I been involved in it? Not much. Uh, so, 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 so not personally. And uh, uh, generally, what I'm interested in is text, uh, searching, and so forth and so on. Uh, uh, games, uh, uh, too addictive for a personality like mine. If I start playing a game, it's, it's over. Um, uh, so, 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 but, but did I answer your question somewhere in that ramble? So do you see it moving, growing, and getting bigger? It is getting bigger. Yeah, it's getting, OK, so, so, so yes, it is getting much bigger. And so, so for example, um, how many of you have an iPad and kids. Okay. If I say Angry Birds, you're going to instantly know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Angry Birds has become the single most powerful driver of iPad sales. We actually bought an iPad because my parents showed up in Vermont. We vacationed with my parents in Vermont. They showed up with iPads. I never. I was totally resisting getting an iPad. I thought, this is just a big iPod. I don't like it. Um, uh, so, so, so my parents show up. They have Angry Birds. My kids are addicted. We had to get an iPad. <laughs> 
So, so gamification, uh, especially at the apps level, okay, so, so a lot of apps gamify ordinary web activities and so forth, and uh, uh, they make it fun, make it child-friendly in some cases. Um, uh, so my son spends all his time uh, on my Android tablet, uh, uh, we also have one of those, uh, uh, playing games. Uh, he's four. Um, uh, and it's, you know, it, it's, it's, it, but I like it because, yeah, he's using a computer. This is great, right? So, so he can't download porn onto the tablet. Uh, so, so, so it's fine. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, gamification is a trend, most definitely. Um, uh, develop, it's, it's, at the moment, it's like the hot new thing. I don't know. Sometimes the hot new thing doesn't pan out. I remember a few years ago when everything was location awareness. Uh, I thought location awareness was going places. Oh my God, who sort of didn't? But anyway, so 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 gamification is a trend. Uh, 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 it remains to be seen where it takes us. Well, did that answer your question? Yes. Can't predict the future beyond that. So, so. Did you notice how I rambled? Are you looking to buy stocks? So, so that, 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 <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, that's what my students are subjected to all the time. Anyway, so um, Kim. Um. So. I've gone into some of these engines that you you recommended, and the topics I'm looking for aren't there. And what topics I'm, are you looking for? Uh, for example, storytelling and communication, and they they weren't necessarily there when I was looking. No, no, but some of them. And I'm when you don't come across them in there, and I you know I try to think about other words that they might be. What do you do when they're not there? Okay, so so I, I can tell you just uh, so storytelling is something that's sort of interesting to me too. Okay, I can tell you there are hundreds of blogs on storytelling. Uh, that's not that's not going to be so 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 if you're not finding storytelling in um, say a service like uh, Technorati uh, uh, or Blog Pulse or uh, several of the other aggregators, um, uh, uh, you can develop your own aggregator. That would be your option. Um, so so but I can't believe I mean, so so have you tried Delicious? You can't find. Uh, 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 Okay, so 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 then if that's the case, uh, so so one I would broaden my search, uh, narrative, narratology, storytelling, um, uh, uh, so 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 moth, you know, the, like the moth. Uh, so so the uh, the the different there there are now uh, a lot of events that involve storytelling and so forth. So so that's I would aggregate those uh, uh, if that's what you're interested in. Yeah. Now that that's that's a huge topic right now in communication, right? So uh, you guys you just passed through my rhetoric class, where you know, so, so I have them write talking points memos, and a big part of that talking points memo is a narrative component, right? You want a narrative for whatever story you're telling. Wow, that's a redundant narrative story. Anyway, so 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 um, uh, uh, so 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 no, there are lots of resources out there. Uh, I would just I, I would say get <laughs> go back and find them, uh, uh, broaden your search. Uh, it might not be, they might not be under the rubric of storytelling, but you might be able to find them under another rubric. Try narrative, narratology, um, uh, so, so, so uh, 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 oral literature, uh, oral traditions, um, uh, indigenous uh, storytelling traditions, those sorts of topics. And you'll find, you should find rich resources. Yes, in your first name. Oh, you were a you're a faculty here. What is this? Yes. So, so this Speaking is, here online. Yeah, this isn't fair. Okay, I, I want to know how we can follow you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 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 uh, there we go. I'm gonna, uh, uh, casuist, C-A-S-U-I-S-T on Twitter. Uh, uh, so, so, casuist means somebody who likes to argue, like casuistry. Uh, so, so that's my. I brand myself as casuist. Now, the problem is, and this is why this is a problem with the way I interact on social media. I'm very capricious. I, I, I set up everywhere you'll find me online, I'm branded as casuist. Okay, again, that's casuistry is a way of arguing. I'm a rhetorician. It's what I do and so forth. Yet, if you go to my Twitter feed, what do you find? A whole bunch of stuff on economics. Okay, that's a problem. Uh, so, so, so what I tell my students over and over again is, okay, so if you have a communicative task, if you want somebody to know something, uh, you need to be outcome based. The first thing you ask yourself is, what one thing do you want your audience to know? What one thing do you want your audience to do? Uh, 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 if you have more than one thing, what you have is noise. If you have a feed, uh, like me, okay, and you want to talk about rhetoric and argument and so forth, talk about rhetoric and argument. You start filling it up with other capricious crap like I do, and what does that do? That, that confuses the issue. Uh, uh, I have a lot of people who would like to follow me to, to, to learn what I know about rhetoric and so forth, and they sometimes go away because what they get is a whole bunch of stuff about economics as it goes by. So, so I should differentiate 
Uh, uh, actually, that's a good idea. But um, uh, uh, I should differentiate. I have two feeds, one for economic stuff, my obsessions, and the other for my professional interests. So, so, so does that answer your question? Yeah, so, so casuist. Um, uh, uh, and I have a blog, uh, elinkix.com. So, so, elinkix. But it's a whole lot of politics and esoteric dialectics. And so I don't, uh, if, you're, if you want to be just thoroughly bored, go to my blog. Um, yeah, so, uh, and uh, you join my other three readers. So, we uh, have so one more question from, uh, from online. I, it seems like I have your whole cohort from 2004 to 2006 online. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> oh. This could be good or bad. <laughs> it's good. Uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, where can you see a listing of all the social filtering sites that and what type of info they're filtering, i.e. techno ratty or f for technical, but delicious for what? Okay, so Technorati is not just, uh, Technorati is a general blog. It's all blogs. Okay, so, 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 but that's a really good point. Okay, so if you're interested in design or technology, Delicious is your community. Um, uh, so, so if your general interests would be Technorati. Um, uh, if you're interested in, uh, uh, again, if you're interested in design, photography, uh, art, and so forth, Tumblr, T-U-M-B-L-R is a huge community um, uh, of people that are interested in art, design, and culture. Um, uh, so, so, so can you, can it, anybody else interested, in, can you give me some ideas of what you might could be interested in? So yes? On that, could you also like search for, this is the topic I'm looking for, an yes. aggregate of? Most so, definitely. You know. In all these services, people are tagging their content. Uh, so, 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 um, yes, uh, you can use keyword search and uh, uh, keyword search will, yeah, uh, exactly. RSS. And, and the, the cool thing about that is uh, some services, uh, like Delicious and so forth, your search itself will give you an RSS feed. Uh, I have a number of feeds in my aggregator that are actually out of RSS. Uh, I mean, out of the, their searches that I made that can't constantly update. It's like I'm constantly searching for that topic so that if anybody talks about it, I can follow them uh, or, or, or appropriate their content. Does that make sense? Okay. So. Well, it seems like if you ask you a question, you can go on for... <laughs> no. so, it's hearing myself speak. Like it. yeah, <laughs> I like the attention. That's why I became an academic. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been eye-opening for, for me, for sure, and I'm sure uh, most of you have, uh, all of you, have taken away something from uh, from this uh, presentation. There's a lot out there, and it's really cool to hear that uh, you can make sense of it somehow. And Thank you for coming. It's been uh, it's been a great evening. It's been a, a good time. I've uh, really enjoyed uh, talking with, uh, with most of you. And I hope you've taken a lot of value from this, from as a prospective student. That uh, we are there for you. We will help you with your application and with uh, your, your life throughout the program. As alumni, thank you. This is still your community. We value your. Uh, attendance and we value your feedback from uh, the Tuesday session and with uh, in, uh, in general. Uh, for the rest of uh, my colleagues, faculty and staff, thank you again for, for being here and for providing uh, this uh, amazing uh, time for students. To everybody that joined us online, lucky you that you don't have to drive home now. So. <laughs> if you're at home. But uh, also thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, we'll be mingling around for the next few minutes, so don't feel that you we are rushing you away. But there still will be golf carts available to catch you up and down to where your vehicles were placed and safe. And uh, we are available on our on our pamphlets. There's a 1-800 number if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about tonight. And we will be following up with an email, so Gil will be uh, watching you online now. So thank you so much. <laughs>